Hey everyone and welcome back. So this video is part of my data science interview question series and in this particular video we're going to go over an interview question involving linear regression residuals. Now if you're not familiar with linear regression then you'll probably want to read up on it or better yet take my course which focuses specifically on this subject and all the caveats you might encounter. This is basically the first model you'll ever learn about, whether you're in machine learning or statistics. So as a data scientist, whatever that means, it's definitely something you'll want to be familiar with. Okay, so from this point onward, I'm going to assume you know about linear regression. The interview question is this. Let's call our residuals E sub i equals y sub i minus y hat sub i. That is the error between the target and the prediction for the ith data point. Now it might surprise you to learn that we can come up with these two identities involving the residuals. First, the sum of all the residuals is zero. And second, the sum of all the residuals multiplied by the corresponding input data is also zero. Now if you're like me, you are probably very surprised by this. It's not at all obvious why the errors not squared would sum up to equal zero, and even more surprisingly, that when you multiply them by the input data, you still get zero. So what's the solution? Can you explain why these identities are true? First, I want to show you this crazy explanation I found on Stack Exchange, which even to me looks totally insane. Feel free to check out this URL if you want to read this explanation for yourself, but what I'm going to show you is a much more straightforward approach and involves zero tricks or outside the box thinking. In fact, the only thing we have to consider is, how do we solve a linear regression model in the first place? I guess there's one trick here, which is that the answer is found midway through the solution for linear regression. In other words, it's not something you have to derive using existing results. It's in fact just one of the basic steps on the way there. In case you don't remember, the basic steps when you're finding the parameters of a model are like this. First, we define a loss function, which in this case is the squared error. That's the sum over all n data points of y sub i minus y hat sub i, all squared y hat sub i is our prediction, and it's equal to w transpose x sub i plus b. And here w is our weight vector and b is our bias term. Then, the second step is to minimize the squared error with respect to our parameters w and b. So how do we do step two? If you recall, it's just basic calculus. We find the derivative of our loss with respect to w and b, set them equal to zero, and then solve for w and b. Actually, this is exactly the answer to our original question. What happens when we take these derivatives and set them to zero? Well, let's see. First, let's take the derivative of j with respect to w. It's the sum over i from 1 to n of y sub i minus y hat sub i times the derivative of y hat sub i with respect to w. Of course, that's just x sub i. But also, y minus y hat is just the residual. So what we end up with is one of our original identities, the sum over e of i times x of i is zero. Next, let's take the derivative of j with respect to b. We get a very similar derivative, except now it's y sub i minus y hat sub i times the derivative of y hat sub i with respect to b. Of course, that's just 1. So this simplifies to the sum over e sub i equals 0. What have we concluded? We've discovered that in order to end up with the identities that we started with, all we need to do is find the solution for the linear regression model. Furthermore, we don't even need to finish finding the solution since we can stop once we found the derivatives and set them to 0. In other words, we don't need to actually find w and b. Instead, we came up with two identities which must be solved in order to find w and b. Therefore, any solver which minimizes the sum of squared errors must also be ensuring that both of these identities are true.